Last time, among other things, we made this steam engine here at my industrial area, which means we've got lots of spare power to play with. And I want to use that power to make a few little quality of life farms that are just going to make things easier for me. And the first of those involves nicking some things from the farm behind me, and that's perfect because, well, we've got just the right space for it. So what I want to do is I want to start making andesite again, and that means we're going to need a bowl and we're going to need a press on top of it. Uh, not where did that go? Oh, there it is. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig down here a couple of blocks because this is essentially connected to my storage there. So I'm just going to put a couple of trims in there. In fact, I'm going to go down further. It's a shovel. It helps. That's it. We're just going to dig a trench along here. We'll just bring our trims along here and cover it up again. Then this one we're just going to swap out for a draw controller slave. Now before I do anything else I want to make sure this is only going to output andesite. So there it is, it's now filtered to do that. So what we've got here is a draw controller slave that's hooked up to our storage and another one there with filters on there. So that filter is for flint and that one is for gravel. So when I turn these around they will start putting those things into our basin here. And underneath the basin, we've got a smart chute with an andesite filter on. I'm just going to cover up this block now. I've shown you that. And that will go back into the storage. And of course, we've also got a filter on the basin itself so that it will only make andesite. Let's turn these around to start filling it up. There goes our gravel. And there goes our flint. But the other thing we're going to need, of course, is some lava. And I'm going to bring that across from over here. not quite like that so let's just make these pipes see through so we can see what's going on inside them you can see the lava isn't getting to this point but that's okay so I'm just going to swap that one out with one of those jobbies ah. now to hook up the power I'm just going to put in a cog above that one and another one up there and then link that through to there with a shaft. And then to get the best output, I'm gonna put a speed controller on there, put a gearbox on there. Where's my gearboxes? There they are. Gearbox onto that one, and then connect this up. It's perfect. And then we can make that go super fast. Yeah, and that's going to be churning out andesite for us. So to check that's coming through, I'm just going to put some andesite into a drawer there. And then move that drawer over to join up with the rest. And we should start seeing andesite go in there. There it is. And what I'm going to do now is make a little square of this. So let's just dig that out and that out there. I'm going to put these in here and same there and we're going to place another bowl here and this one's going to have a mixer on top and we're going to do more or less the same thing but this time we are going to have andesite coming out of that one and iron nuggets coming out of that one and of course we need to put some funnels on the mixer itself on the bowl basin just to make sure things are going to go in there and let's get that hooked up to the power. So I've just bought a shaft out here. We've got a vertical gearbox and a cog to link things up. And I'll put some encased chain drives on top like that. We should, there we go, get power into there. And that's now making andesite alloy for us. And we're just gonna hook it up to the storage in the same way. So we'll just swap that out for a slave put a smart chute in there, chuck a filter on it so it only takes out the alloy and that's the job done. And back in the storage we've now got a steady stream of andesite alloy coming through. Now in both of these cases I could put some kind of mechanism on them to stop when the storage gets too full but it would actually do that themselves. So essentially what will happen is these brass chutes will get full up and then the basin will get filled up and basically things will just grind to a halt naturally. So that's pretty much spot on really what we need it to do. 
In order to make these smart shoots, I needed to use some of these electron tubes and they are a bit of a pain in the butt to make. So that's one of the other things I want to automate around here. Another one being the precision mechanisms that we need in order to make these speed controllers and a few other things. So I'm going to fiddle about and try and make a couple of machines to make those two things. For the precision mechanism machine, what we're going to do is we're going to take some andesite alloy and put it through a saw and that will turn it into shafts. And then at the same time, we'll be taking some of our wood from the wood farm over there and we'll be sawing that not once but twice. So that will turn it into uh, jungle planks. Well, planks. And then with a deployer and our shafts, we can then turn those into cogs. So cog and then deploy another uh, plank onto it and I'll make a large cog. And then together with the iron nuggets and some uh, gold that we're going to crush down, that should be everything we need to make our precision mechanisms. Sounds easy, right? Let's try and turn that into a machine. Okay, so this is my reasonably compact cog maker. We're going to take some logs from out of our storage. Obviously, that's not connected up yet. And same down here with our andesite alloy. We've got our double saw where the logs will come along and be made into planks, which will go into these storage drawers here. The planks then come out of that belt on top there, or that, uh, that funnel, I should say, and along this belt into these two funnels, which link into these chutes, which, uh, which have these deployers. So they will be deploying planks. On the bottom layer, We've got our andesite alloy going into a saw, so that will turn it into the shafts, and the shafts come out onto this belt. Let's go around. So the belt will come along here, the shafts coming out here onto the first deployer into this tunnel, so that will make that a small cog. The tunnel will split the, the cogs, uh, one uh, into this belt and the other into that one. So the one that comes along here will get deployed again and that will turn it into a large cog, putting it into that barrel. The other one just goes straight into this barrel. And yes, these are drawers and not barrels. I know, I know. So I'm hoping all that will work. We need to first of all connect these two drawers up to our storage. And then of course we need to power it all. And both of those things involve a little bit of digging. And apart from needing to change out these tunnels for brass ones to make sure the cogs alternate between the two belts, that's pretty much working perfectly. So let's just crank up the speed. But this isn't supposed to be a machine that makes cogs. Well, at least not just only cogs. This is meant to be making precision mechanisms. And skipping ahead just a little bit, mainly because of a recording derp on my part, Yes, another one. Well, here is our completed machine. And what happens here is we've got our cogs coming up at the top over here. Whoops, uh, there, yes, just behind me. Hold on, let's sleep so we can see what we're doing, shall we? That's better. So yeah, as I was saying, I've basically taken the, those cogs and those belts that are coming out and I've raised them up on this belt here so they're now elevated above the rest of our machine. And that's because down below we want our gold ingots coming out here and they get uh, squashed down here into the flattened ones and they get their things deployed and they go into this barrel at the end here. Then we've got a filter coming out of that barrel which will just make sure that the complete precision mechanisms stay in there but anything else comes out and goes along into this one where it just goes back round the belt again. So things go round the loop a few times so that we eventually end up with a barrel full of precision mechanisms. And having now generated a stack of 64 precision mechanisms, to be honest, that's probably more than I'm ever going to need. So the machine might be useless now, but it was fun to make anyway. So now I want to make a machine that makes electron tubes. And for that, we've got a mixer set up here. And into that mixer, we are going to put redstone and quartz. Is that the right set of drawers? It is. So that's just going to feed into that mixer. So when we mix those things together, that will give us the rose stuff that we need to make these things from. Hold on, let me just bring this up. One of these things, the uh, 
that's it, the rose quartz. Then what we need to do is we need to sand that with sandpaper. So we're gonna make sandpaper here as well. To make our sandpaper, we're gonna do pretty much the same setup, but just above that. So basin there, popper going into it on this side, uh, a mixer above it, and then we've got some drawers. And in those drawers, we're gonna put sand and paper. And now we're going to need a belt coming away from this bottom basin. Let's build a little trench for that. And we don't need to get any kind of funnel coming out of here because it will do that automatically for us, which is great. Above the belt, we're gonna have a deployer. I'll put a chute on top of the deployer to make sure that gets fed in with the stuff coming in from up here. And of course, what is gonna be coming out of there is sandpaper. Just make sure it's only sandpaper. Chucking a sand out, I want a filter on there, there we are. Just to recap then, that makes our sandpaper, this makes our rose quartz. So the rose quartz comes down here, then the sandpaper gets deployed onto the rose quartz to make polished rose quartz. And now I've got that going up a couple of levels to here. And the reason for that is that the crafting recipe for these electron tubes requires the rose quartz to be on the top level and iron sheets on the bottom, so that's why we've raised it up a bit because we're going to use some crafters here to get things where we want them. There we are. In fact, they don't need to come up quite so high. Let's bring them down a little bit. So we'll just pop a funnel on there to make sure that the rose quartz gets into this top layer. And obviously what we're going to want coming into here is our iron. Not any old iron though. It needs to be an iron sheet. So because it needs to be an iron sheet, we need a mechanical press to pop on there and we'll get some iron to come out onto here. So just like everything else on this machine, the iron can be fed in directly into this drawer because everything in here we're just going to be putting in manually, these things here. But what I am going to do is I am going to link this drawer up to our storage it's just so if there is excess iron then it will feed into here. But uh, we might even be too far away from the storage for that to work, but we'll give it a try. Finally, we just need something for the mechanical crafter to output the finished product to. So I'll just shove a barrel on there. And then, of course, we need to power it up. So that's all connected up now. It might not all be going the right way. We're about to find out when I put this cog on here. But that's going the right way. That's good. What about this belt? Yeah, that's going the right way too. And everything else doesn't matter. Oh, we haven't connected this up yet. So that just needs a gearbox there, a shaft there, and a cog there. Ah, that sandpaper's gonna despawn there though, isn't it? Just needs to sort that out. There we are, that's all working. That was quite a simple solution in the end. My only problem now is I don't have a lot of redstone to demonstrate this with, but we do have 18 shiny brand new electron tubes in the output barrel, which is perfect. And thanks to an audio system update, there were no game sounds on any of those clips. So let me actually show you what this thing sounds like, because you haven't heard it yet. So let's just put some quartz and redstone in there. gets mixed up here into our rose quartz and then crafted. What a great noise. Now my plan for this episode was to get these two things set up just as a quick little job before we came over here to my farming area for the main event because there's still so much I need to do over here. And that's what this video was meant to be about. It's kind of sorting the animals out and sorting the storage out for the farm over there. And creating a larder for the kitchen and to start making some of the farmer's delight recipes. But truth be told, I've run out of time for that because I've been busy doing a couple of other things. Let's go and sit down and I'll tell you about them. One of the things I've been doing is revamping my Twitch stream setup. So I've now got lovely scrolly text along the bottom and a bit of a new look and a new overlay. So join me over at twitch.tv slash plodplod for my next stream and you can see what I've been up to. And I've been working on something else too. I've been setting up a Ko-fi account and now you can join me on Ko-fi. So if you're enjoying my content and you want to support me on a regular basis, then Ko-fi is a great way of doing that. 
and joining as a member of my Kofi will make sure you get a whole load of perks, including seeing your name in videos like this one. So if that's something that appeals to you, and if you can afford to do it, then please do consider joining me over on Kofi. So next time around, we're gonna rustle up ourselves some sheep, pigs and cows and do something a bit more productive with these chickens. And we're gonna sort out our storage for the arable farm over there. <laughs> so there's a lot to do and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.